From the age of four, all I wanted to do was sail around the world. That was my entire life. I didn't look outside of it, I didn't want to. You know, I was living the dream. And suddenly, on that boat, you realize that what you have is all you have, there is no more. You know, if I said to you all now, go off into Brussels and find everything that you need for your survival for the next three months, that's just what we do. And when you leave, that's it. For three months, that's it. What you don't have, you don't have. What you have, you have. If you use it up, there is no more. And so you develop this overwhelming definition of what the word finite means to you. And then you translate that very quickly to the global economy. We have finite resources available to us, and yet our economic model uses them up. That can't work in the long run. And I didn't want to see it, and I didn't want to reflect on it, and I didn't want to pursue it, but once I'd thought it, I had no choice. Mm -hmm. It was a defining moment in my life. And to be honest, immediately I thought, someone will have an answer. Mm -hmm. No, I'm going to learn about this, it'll be fine. And the more I learned, the more I realized that it wasn't. And I thought, maybe I should sail around the world and carry a message on the boat. But what's the message? I didn't know what the message was. And it was finding that message that led to the circular economy for me. Yeah. I've always seen it that there are many things we do that we absolutely know will not run in the long term. In some cases, the legacy, you know, look at power, how we switched away from coal. You know, that's all happened since I've been in this space, which is nothing. Suddenly, coal becomes a stranded asset. So we have seen some big shifts. Um, I think when it comes to circularity, it's about looking at what do we grow? There are some things we need to grow faster than we've ever grown anything before. If you're growing, um, if you're, if you're in agriculture and you grow your products in a regenerative way, and at the foundation we do a lot of work in the food and regeneration space, um, that's, a, that's something we need to grow really quickly. We need more regeneration. That makes the world a better place. It enables biodiversity to thrive because we're regenerating natural systems through the production of food for our consumption. It's doing more than one job. It's making our economy solve some of the world's biggest problems. The same with you know, the cycling of materials within products. If you can build a product so that the product runs on as little energy as possible, it's made using as little energy as possible, the materials feed back into the economy, then you're building something which can continue. If, you're, if, you, if you make a product which you know you get back, to make the next one you don't need to buy more raw materials, there you're, you're leaving space for nature. You know, you're, you're looking through a different lens. It's very interesting when you look at what, 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 is, what is it you're trying to grow? What is it we actually really need? What makes the world a better place? Okay. You know, what reduces carbon emission? Regulation plays yeah. an absolute key role. And, you know, we see that again and again. Less so with some things, more so with others. Um, the, the Green Deal is ahead. I think the Green Deal thinking of Europe and, and things Europe, that happen yeah. here in this, in this city. Um, the Green Deal really needs to define industrial transformation in Europe. Ultimately, that's what, if we're really serious about this, that's what it has to do. And, you know, but it's a big, big it's challenge. It's a big challenge, but you have to start with a big picture. You can't, it's a bit like in the early days when I was on my journey, you'd see this is what the company does and here's our sustainability report. And the sustainability report report's great, but look at what's happening over here. So actually, that's not the business. The business is here. It's an add-on. And I think that's how I see the policy work. The policy has to be the thing. We have to get to a point where our very operation of our economy solves the world's biggest problems. Through industrial agriculture, we make the world a better place because we do regenerative farming, because the biggest players and the smallest players in that space are aligned on where we're trying to get to. That when we make products, we design them in a way so they fit within the system. Yeah. It's, so policy is absolutely key. And the Green Deal is, is, is at the forefront of that, but it's not there yet. Do you never lose hope? Or, or let me put it in another way. How can we give hope? Sometimes it's hard. You know, I've been doing this for only 13 years, which compared to a lot of people is, is actually not that long. But I always try and step back, you know, in those moments where you think, how are we going to do this? And just look at what we have done in actually sometimes incredibly short spaces of time. You know, when COVID struck, which was horrendous and terrifying and tragic for so many people, we reinvented how our economy functioned in weeks. In weeks, we did what would have taken years, literally. 
we can see what's possible when we really put our minds to things.